<laughs> so um, I'm going to call a meeting to order. And uh, there's no issue with quorum. I see uh, Bill and Donna and uh, well, let's plus this this group here. The only one I have missing is Doug Foster and Jim Bright. Okay, but see, see him anywhere? I don't know. <laughs> I saw Jim Bright rowing his dinghy about an hour or so ago. Um, so anyway, this is everyone remembers our last meeting. And uh, this is a continuation of that meeting. Uh, we have heard from the public and both both sides of the issue, um, from the South Shore Cove issue. I, I can't allow any more interjection from the public, but I am gonna ask um, that this group discuss anything they want to discuss. <clears throat> but. Prior to that, we have a letter here from Redmond Winch Winchell, uh, a clarification over uh, Agnes Peel, um, a complaint about her boat down in the South Shore. And I think everybody's seen the uh, letter of uh, from Agnes as well as their, their attorney. And I'd like a motion to accept that to be entered into the record. Uh, I make that motion. Is that seconded? Second. Okay. Any discussion? If no discussion, then we accept the uh, letter as written for clarification on her. Do we have to vote? Yeah, you're right. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. All in favor, please raise your hand, say aye. 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 Carried. Thank you. And just real quick, Rick, you might want to clarify what the letter Said oh well, there was a com the initial complaint stated that there was a, a VHF radio that was uh, loud on squelch for uh, a long period of time, and it clarified the fact that her boat doesn't have a VHF on it, and it couldn't have been her boat, so it was somebody else's boat. This is during 2021, I believe. Yeah, yeah, so. and the uh, uh, letter is quite clear. I think it's all been emailed everybody and I have the original copy here if anyone wants to see it. So okay. Everyone happy with that? Do we do the minutes? We skipped over. Approve the minutes. Uh yeah. Is that, has everybody read these minutes? We need to make a correction. Go ahead. On the attendance, my name is listed twice and Bill Johnson was omitted, so we could make that correction. Sure, and Bill. Are these the minutes from last the public hearing? Yeah. Last one? yeah. Um, I think I would advise you table it and then, um, and then include the minutes from tonight's meeting and then have the committee vote on them uh, together at the next meeting. Um, and also um, prepare, you know, we can prepare a draft of the next five committee. But following Robert's rule of order, we made a motion to adjourn. You can't do a continuance afterwards. Well, if you want, you, you don't have to follow Robert's rules of order. Okay. Um, and I think uh, considering, you know, that there was a significant public hearing, um, a lot of information was provided and that um, we're all you know, deliberating it tonight. Um, and then just, you know, we want to make sure that uh, we've got everything in there that we want. So, so are we following Maine Municipal or what rules are we following, John? You can follow whatever rules you want. Um, Robert's rules, unless your charter says Robert Moose Mortar shall be followed, which I don't think it does. I, I think. I, I, I hear both sides of the story. Uh, I personally don't see any problem if we do approve what's written for the last week. I haven't reviewed them. And I just wanna, if this is appealed, that's the rec that's part of the record. Okay. Um, and I think it would be wise to, to have your legal counsel review your minutes. Um, you wanna read them? I don't have to, I think, I, I, yeah. I, I'll, I'll take that as uh, good advice. 
Yeah, I mean, why, why not? Yeah, why not? It's fine. Okay. So anyway, this is a continuation of uh, the meeting two weeks ago. We had uh, two and a half plus hours of uh, uh, testimony from both parties. Uh, there were some questions asked. There was a lot of information presented, uh, whether it was pertinent or not. That's up to this group to decide. <clears throat> but before we continue, I would like to have a positive motion on the floor. And by a positive motion, I mean um, the appeal, the uh, the appeal was for the four moorings that were issued were issued by the Harbor Master. And I think the positive motion should be in the tone of um, we accept uh, the position of the harbor master, or we, but if we say we don't, that's a negative motion. So I'd like to hear a positive motion for us to continue. Howie. I, I want to understand this, Rick. So we have a positive motion, but then we could vote negative. Oh, absolutely. On. Okay, got yeah, it. Yeah, I understand. But, sure. But a I, negative motion and you vote positive. Right, it gets confusing. Very confusing. I agree. Okay, I'll make the motion. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know that I can. Because I I don't I don't know that I can. All right. I'm sorry. I make a motion that we that uh, we uphold the decision of the Harbor Master. Absolutely. But I'd like to add that we would uh, at this present time have no more than the four moorings there. If I could Considering you haven't discussed any of the, the evidence that was before you at the hearing, right? Um, I, my advice would be to hold off on um, even putting a motion forward yet, and then just discussing as a committee what you heard regarding the warrant. So then you may that conversation may lead the, the committee to a determination regarding. Um, how they might vote because we already have some, you know, a proposal to amend a motion. We have, you know, you have heard anything from any of the committee members about what they heard and you know what evidence they uh, had them, you know, thinking one way or the other on this. So I think it's to be best for the committee to deliberate, and what, discuss the information they've heard. What's come before us is whether we approve the decision of the harbor master or not on these four mornings. That's the that's the issue. That we're going to discuss. So my idea is that if we have a motion on the floor to approve it, we can open it up for discussion. And uh, however, when we're ready to vote, we'll either vote it up or down. But Rick, I think there's one subtlety here. We could vote it down with the intention of another motion. That would that be comes. another motion. Right. But, but we could do that in this case. I'm going to go with my ruling. You're the boss. Okay. So, Tom, you want to clarify your motion? Or you want me to? You clarify. Uh, the motion before the board is whether the Harbor Committee upholds the decision of the Harbor Master to allow four moorings in the South Shore Cove. Yes, sir. Okay. That seconded. Was that with the covenant that there would be no more additional moorings? No, no, no. We're at, just at so, just, not. so we're just going to do that, not any discussion. Right. So what, seconded. So what we're saying here under discussion is that we find no errors or faults in the process that John used and the decision he made. Is that what we're saying? Uh, no, we're no saying, I, think, I think we're opening it up for discussion. We're opening it for discussion. We're, we're either discussion. going to uphold his decision or not. Okay. I can also yeah. see our lawyer shaking his head. So maybe he. And we were talking about we can add to it, make contingencies, we can expand we'll, we'll, with we'll another motion. Right. Right. But you could add to your motion. Or I just think it's important to clarify and that you, the hearing you held, was a, was a de novo hearing. Right. So I just want to make clear that you're not, this isn't an appellate decision where 
you know, you give deference to John's decision that because it's a de novo hearing, it's like you're hearing the evidence, all this evidence for the first time, like John never even, it's never even before John. And so that it's important that you, I just want to clarify, it's not, you know, you're not giving any deference to John's decision. You, you listen to John, you listen to the South Shore Cove Association, you listen to members of the public, you must listen to members of the fleet, you have your own, you went on a site visit, you also have your own experiences on the water in that area, familiarity of moorings, all that. All that information is part of your decision here. Ultimately, you can frame it as that whether or not you're upholding the Harbor Mark Master's decision to, to grant four moorings. I think that language is fine, but what's, what's and I have some suggestions on how you finalize the, you would finalize your motion to vote. But what's important here is that um, you're taking all the information you've heard, you, you get to apply whatever weight you want to that information. You don't give John's um, any further, any more, there's not an appellate standard. So you, you don't have, again, you can give his evidence more weight. You can give his testimony more weight, but it's not an appellate standard. You're listening, to, it's like you're making this decision anew for yourself tonight. Did, did you have a suggestion for a, a motion? Sure, I could provide, I could provide a, you know, the prose language for a motion. If you Would like. you like to hear that? I, I, me personally, it doesn't matter at this point because we just need to have a discussion. So I'd like to hear what the attorney's uh, proposal is. Okay, I do too. Sure. So I would, I would, so as I understand how, what you guys are seeking to do in the pod, in the affirmative, an affirmative motion is based on the pre filed evidence and comments, a site visit, and testimony and comments provided at public hearings. The Harbor Master's decision to grant four moorings to the Northeast Harbor Fleet and South Shore Cove um, satisfies the requirements of Section 7.4 of the Harbor Ordinance because the moorings do not detract from the order in the tidal waters or harbors of the town and do not jeopardize the safety and use of the tidal waters and harbors of the general public. I definitely wouldn't have prepared that. <laughs> uh, it's, and that's language right out of your ordinance. Though. It's up to the board and so probably, do we have a motion on the floor? Well, this is I, where we don't even know what we're going. We're talking about getting the legal. We haven't right. taken a vote yet. Uh, what the attorney just said is that that would be the wording of the motion to clarify what Tom had just suggested. We do in the affirmative, and then we can have discussion. If I understand correctly. Yeah, if we accept that as the motion. So Tom, the do you, motion. Tom, do you accept that as the motion? Yes. Yeah, I'll I do. second that. It's been moved and seconded that we accept Peter's recommended motion. All right, and you provide a copy to me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That being said, I will now open it for discussion for members of the Harbor Committee and your uh, take on all the uh, information provided, the testimony and your feelings. And I'll start with Howie. Oh boy. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I have a lot to say, but I wasn't expecting to go first, but that's okay. You called me first. Uh, I am I'm deeply compelled by the um, South Shore Association uh, as landowners and as um, trying to protect their property in some way. I, I'm, I'm, you know, my heart goes out to them in that regard. And, and I'm not so keen on worrying about the, the uh, fleet trying to get more moorings just to create more business. Um, at the cost of the town on some level. And so uh, both of those things are sort of compelling in my mind. At the same time, the way the statue is written for this town right now, the, the, um, the fleet has done everything that's expected of them in every regard. And, and the statue says that they get what they want, even though I don't 
I don't actually agree with it personally, but I would have to vote for that at this moment. And, and I don't feel comfortable doing that. So instead I was gonna make a proposal of something a little different. And that's why I didn't feel compelled to make the motion. Um, well, I, I will say this, we can uh, follow, continue on with this. We can vote on a motion. We can also, after that, you could make another motion too. Okay, so I'd like to ex at least express my thoughts now, or do you want me to wait for that? I think I, I think you should wait. Okay. Yeah. Chris, do you have anything uh, you'd like to add? Well, I think uh, there's two sides of this coin and and there's some, you know, great points. I mean, I, I think in the future, we definitely have to be protective of areas designated by eelgrass. Uh, the more you learn about that and how, you know, important it is in our ecosystem environment and they're planning it now for basically carbon sinks in other areas, it's something we got to be well aware of. I think the moorings are in a bad spot. Uh, they don't fall the depth terrain as we've aligned all our other harbors to, as we saw by going out in your boat, going from 15 feet to 24 for the same series of mooring that should have been spread out, not in a box pattern. And that's how it was first brought up at a meeting that we know how they're put in. And that's how we first brought to our attention those four moorings before any of these proceedings. Uh, I understand the fleet's desire and I understand the great things they do. I was blessed to go through the rowing and sailing program and know the value of it. And I think it's you know been a big part of my life and loving the ocean. And I understand that those moorings that they ran to get revenue from funds back to the fleet to allow more kids, especially to be part of the program and build the programs. And I think that's something that shouldn't be overlooked. Now, I honestly think those four moorings are in a bad spot. And I think they should have been around the corner or I think, you know what I mean, just going down in a safer spot. If I was to own them, I, as a fleet, I wouldn't have put them there. And you wouldn't have needed the oversized tackle. I mean, when we get a bad storm and we get a hurricane again, those rocks are gonna roll. I dove in there and seen what happens. And there's also either that or room to expand where people's concern about uh, line of sight was, because they're actually owned by Clifton Dock, out from Clifton Dock, going in towards, you know, basically Sioux Harbor, Bracey Cove, there's a larger area in there where those moorings could go and or future expansion for the moorings that we know we'd asked and we voted on made a motion about moorings that were uh, put in place after basically the moratorium on setting without permission. And four or five were identified as private mooring owners, not to do with Clifton. And we still haven't got to whose those are. And those are concerned about those moorings going out in the channel. And maybe some of those can also be shifted into some other spots. And I also, the fact that they have 133 moorings, that's almost twice what we have in Northeast Harbor. And their waiting list is less. And as a member, you could get a mooring faster, or rent a mooring faster by being a member of the fleet than you could be on the waiting list of the town. So that's gotta come into you know, a play where you know, it's, a, it's a give and take. How, ma how many do they get for you know, their group and, you know, when they already have a majority of them at rents, but then again, it fuels back to it's supporting a great cause and a great part of our community that's been here forever. So I, I think, I think, I really think those four moorings shouldn't stay in the spot they are, but I think they should be moved and given, you know, they should still have four moorings, but it's not in that location. Okay. Wait, look at me. Do you have anything you'd like to add? Uh, I personally, I would feel more comfortable with if it was, I mean, if property owners had moorings out in front of their houses, I would feel more comfortable. I'm not, I'm less comfortable with corporations owning moorings if individual people own them, I'd feel better about it. I don't, I don't, um, I don't, I guess, you know, we heard from both sides and I, experts or when you pay somebody to come talk they're going to say what you want them to hear so i don't know if i pay that much attention to what the expert said because <clears throat> that people are probably going to move their boats off there anyways if it's a bad place to be i kind of will reflect on what uh eric just said i think 
the big struggle I have here is that we're turning that cove over to moorings that can be rented. I understand and I agree with Chris, uh, the role that the fleet pays, plays in our town is great, but it is a commercial venture. And would that set a precedent for that cove and other coves for commercial entities to apply to us to have rental moorings? And I agree with Eric definitely that if we were dealing with a mooring for those owners in that cove, I wouldn't have a problem. I wouldn't struggle whatsoever. But the fact is they're rental moorings. And those numbers that Chris brought up that, you know, the fleet has their moorings, Clifton Dock has their moorings. It's a lot of moorings. And my main concern here is where does this growth stop? Uh, we just keep bringing, I mean, more people come in, more people want moorings. How do we resolve this? We're here to protect the resources for the town of Mount Reserve. How do we manage them? I have a real concern by approving these moorings as rental moorings and going forward. The other issue I have is being on this committee and being on the parking subcommittee and dealing with parking issues in and around the marina, I have a big problem with the parking over there at the fleet that if you keep adding moorings for members, how do they address the parking? There doesn't seem to be anyone addressing that. And again, I say the fleet is a great entity for this town and, and does a great job, but we have to address the future. We have to look ahead. We have to look where, where are we going to be with this in five years? Where are we going to be with this in 10 years? We need to look at that, not just today. All right. Um, so based on new information that we heard um, envir about environmental issues and also safety concerns, um, and as Jim said, the parking for me all along has been a huge problem because that, you know, that's just exponentially really impacting the community as a whole. And I also think um, the waterfront, but um, from a safety safety in moorings in that harbor, as we saw, I don't think it's a good harbor. Um, and the eelgrass, I think um, there's also, we need to be thinking about precedents being set way down the road for just throwing moorings in all over free coastline. Um, so I think there's there's a lot of environmental issues that we need to look at, whether it's just visual, um, and we're losing that stuff quickly. Yeah. I agree with all of your conversations here <clears throat> or your feelings. Um, the environment, parking, all this. But you got to remember that this community they're trying to make it grow. These people are coming in here and they want a place for their boat. And there's no, it's obvious there's not enough moorings for them to be, to be occupied. That's number one. Number two, the thing that really touches me off is the fact that back in 2001, the fishermen on the coast of Maine had to give up Sundays during July and August to not fish. And <laughs> it was because of the complaints of the summer people who didn't want boats out in front of their place on the Sabbath day. Tommy, that's been on the books for a long, long time before 2001. Yep. For as long as I can remember, and that goes back to I, 1980. I, I called now, e &R and they told me today. It's, it's been a long time before 2001. But anyway, my point is, the fishermen, they're just getting in a prime season to lose those eight days or at least four. And in the paper, all of the discussion, it all came back. We didn't want to see boats in that cold. And I say, you know, we need to be, uh, I don't know what the word is, but we need to look at the whole thing and 
study and figure out how to solve this problem. I don't, I agree if I had a multi-million dollar house there and there was no boats and then all of a sudden they showed up, I'd probably be a little disappointed, but you can't be narrow-minded. You got to have an open mind on it. That's. Um, Donna, do you have anything you'd like to add? Um, I'm listening to all of the discussion and I, I, I feel if it's okay, I wanted to hear um, a little bit more about Howie's um, idea, not, a, not necessarily a proposal, but um, Howie, did you have something that you were going to say about um, something, something different? Um, I was, but let, let's let Rick go through all the folks here. And then, and then if you want to allow me to do that, I sure. will. Bill, you have a, you'd like to interject? I'm surprised uh, to see other than uh, members of the Harbor Committee uh, as a part of this meeting. I thought it was going to be a discussion between the Harbor Committee members. It is. It is. It, it, yeah, but it has to be a public discussion. Yeah, it's, it's, a public, it's a public meeting, though. Okay. Do you have anything you'd like to add about the decision? Of, no, the uh, previous speakers have uh, done very well. Okay. Can I just on what Tom said, um, the fleet has under 30, a wait list for under 30, but the town has a wait list of 200 and- There's a, a little over hundred for the Northeast Harbor. Are there, well- There is, there's 200 plus for the four harbors that the town okay. has. But I think the point is we can't accommodate everyone. We just, whether it's parking down here or I know it's off topic, but we we can't we can't accommodate everyone. I um, I think the Harbor Master acted within his rights and within the laws of the state. Um, if if it were me, I wouldn't want a boat in that cove, but uh, uh, for the summertime. With uh, good observation, I think it worked out fine. The eelgrass situation was a surprise, and I'm sure it's going to be uh, something that's going to be very effective. However, um, according to the testimony, um, the area of the eelgrass equaled about 208,000 square feet. Um, I calculated the area of that cove between 25 and 29 acres. Uh, the four moorings in the eelgrass area, according to the testimony, affected a, had a negative effect on the eelgrass of, of 440 square feet. And so the total area being affected was 1,760 square feet out of 208,000 square feet. Um, these are things that you just, you know, they hit you in the face when you do a little math. And we're talking about an equal, an area that's equal to 25 acres minimum, maybe up to 29 acres. Doesn't seem possible, but when you do the measurements, that's what it figures out to. So I think John acted uh, within his authority, and he was, I think it was an attempt to uh, help out the mooring shortage. Uh, I could see moving the uh, four moorings out of the eelgrass because that's, I, I, the state's going to step in on that. But uh, I personally would support John's decision to allow the mornings to stay. Chris. Uh, my pointing out the eelgrass is that, so Gilpatrick Cove is full of eelgrass. And if you dive in there, you'll see the areas that are charred out. There's others towards Bracey Cove, over towards Bear Island, that other cove here, and there's heavy mooring fields. So 
when those are done and set there, I mean, people that know the bottom or fish here know that there's eelgrass there. It's just that we didn't know the importance of eelgrass to our ecosystem. I mean, I luckily learned about it from Jane Disney doing water quality samples and Stanley Brook. And then she was also, after she got done her career teaching, expanded into testing the base French from the Bay and you know, discovering the importance of, of, of the eelgrass. So I'm just saying that we didn't know about it, but I don't think we should go back and remove moorings there, but I think we need to be aware when it becomes present, you know, as we go forward as committee, that that has, you know, when we, we're doing that, those areas as an identifier can show that we, there's maybe other methods of conservation and just be well aware uh, of the impact of it. Mm -hmm. And I would say in John's process, you didn't have to consider eelgrass, I don't think. He didn't know anything about it. Right. So this is something we're going to be dealing with going forward. And that isn't all eelgrass. So this patch, that old COVID is for me, because the rest is, is like what, small rocks, kind of like that, in that middle that break off from that wedge. It's just those two patches on either side, and they come in. And then in the middle, there's kind of like broken bottom of kind of like almost a cobblestone that's been rounded, you know. The, the by measurements this, figure out to the uh, approximately five acres of, of eelgrass. Right, it's not all out of twenty-five acres of right. area. But going forward, after this, no matter what this decision is, I know we're dealing with this tonight, but we will be considering eelgrass in the mooring process. I would guess. I, I mean, other harbors are. That's. I mean, I also read through in other states. I. I don't think I haven't seen reputation, but you know, remanagement or remoorings and the if, using of the conservation moorings and then reevaluating some people as they other harbors as they've realigned which we've done in the past have have avoided or used a, a different setup in those areas it became known and present john are we any mooring now in the town waters has to go through you now it's not That's a free for all like it was yeah. not long ago it has to be under and my decision my approval how do you know <laughs> other than if somebody's honest and comes to you, if somebody dumps one. I mean, there's yeah. areas in the town where someone could dump a mooring and mm -hmm. ultimately unless somebody knew and saw it, that I may never, never know. Right. And that's what, when they, you remember when the Franny came to us and asked for it to be repealed, he had mentioned because of the other moors, you can look them. I mean, now all the sad, if you look on, the satellite maps back and see these dots have increased and where they've expanded. And he also brought up the fact that if we're going to look at their moorings at the time was the boat yards and other boat yards and we need to be more accountable. Before this all went, we had a discussion that was brought up about that. We, the moorings need to be registered and they're supposed to be, but even the ones after the cutoff point 2017 for our ordinance, they, they're not being numbered. They're not being, you know what I mean, registered with the town, all of them. And that's something we discussed as a committee that needs to be expanded. And hopefully with an additional member down there now doing office work, we can in the future move forward to knowing where every mooring is, getting a registration, getting a certification of inspection and so forth. And then having a better control as so the usage and where, if there's room for expansion, <clears throat> if, you know, it, it's sad that you look at some codes are monopolized by one commercial entity or one resident. You have some summer homes that have a dock or had the means and they plant moorings and there's a lot of moorings that don't have boats on them you see every year, but they have, they own occupy the space. And is that fair to someone else? Not really. And then if, and when the harbors are full, it maybe someone at access would be able to set a mooring somewhere where access it. And granted, like I said, the fleet has given that opportunity to people that couldn't get a mooring in there to get it. So it's helped in both avenues and them using their facility and launches especially, you know, has made it beneficial and with the knock with, their, with the, having the dinghy boats there too. To, so those boats, you more could be accessed from that has been, you know, and that's also helped with our congestion in the heart. Any comments from anybody else? Well, how do you want to <laughs> pipe in again? I, I'd like to say something, yeah. Yeah, go for it. Thank you. So um, I agree with everyone, you know, in terms of the natural resources of the town and trying to protect them and all of that. I'm totally on board with that. And, and that's really my main concern as well, is protecting the natural resources of the town. 
and, and then deciding how the town wants to divide them up. Um, but right now, I think we're sort of at a juncture where this never really came up before, where people are just popping moorings in front of other people's houses and that sort of thing. And, and I'm going to just step back for just a minute here and just give you a little bit of history of something that happened to me. So many, many years ago, I lived in Kennebunk and I moved into a neighborhood where there were dirt bikes running around and there was a noise ordinance, but somehow it just didn't quite cover the dirt bikes because it was put in place so it didn't cover the dirt bikes. But in fact, they didn't do it right. So the bottom line is, is that after a couple of years of working through the town and everything, we were able to put an amendment to the ordinances on the, you know, for up for a vote at the town meeting or what have you, and, and um, or elections actually, it's during a town election. And then we were able to change the ordinance for something that happened. And so what I'm suggesting is something like that in this situation. So it's completely like not anything like what we've discussed so far, but what I'm suggesting is, is a twofold opportunity. One is, if, if there's any way, you know, and someone can tell us, but if there's any way that we can table this decision for like two years, I know it sounds crazy, but hear me out, for two years and temporarily assign those four moorings to the people. Like they have them, you know, already. It, it's not like it's gonna get crazy with more at the moment, but temporarily just allow them to have them for a certain amount of time, I'm suggesting two years. And then during that time, if, if the whoever party wants to change the ordinance to meet some standard, you know, then I think we should change that ordinance and let the town vote as, as a collective people right. to what's going on and for their own resources, rather than us making some decision right here, right now for the entire town. Um, it, that's just how I feel about it. Uh, and, and I think it's possible to do all of that. Zoom members, do you have something to say? Um, I would like to hear from our attorney about what he thinks in response to what Howie just uh, sort of um, uh, shared. Sure, um, just to clarify, I'm not gonna give my opinion on the merits of one way or the other, whether he's more. I'm sorry, I, I, I misspoke. I don't mean your opinion. I mean, could you tell, so let us know if that's a possibility or? The general concept of like, we can make a decision that isn't, that's outside of, you know, the moment. So I think my, and to what you're getting at, how I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what you're saying is there, you're looking for more, process to allow for some consideration on the entire ordinance to be changed or the ordinance about moorings about and, moorings. and more specifically i should say that like if the parties want to change the mooring thing they should meet with with our committee and try to come up with something together that makes sense sure. and and i and i personally think that like any mooring moving forward should have a mooring plan you know, because it seems like that's really what's what's at, at stake here, right? Like, you know, if you want to put parking on that mooring plan, you know, that there's a requirement for parking, we can do that. If you want to put requirements for eelgrass, we can do that. If you want to put requirements that neighbors need to be notified ahead of time, just like neighbors are notified when your construction is next door. We can put all those kinds of requirements into the plan and figure it out and make it proper for people. But right now it's just sort of like a grab in my mind. So, so what you're, so I, I think I understand what you're saying, Howie. I would, my position is the committee should vote on what's before it as far as these four moorings as the ordinance reads now. Um, I wouldn't table it for further deliberations on the ordinance. That being said, after this meeting, a whole number of its committees, one of its jobs is to review the ordinance and to, you know, and to provide proposals, you know, changes. I know the South, I believe the South Shore Cove Association has also requested the committee consider 
um, depend a, uh, a mooring plan or, or lack thereof for South Shore Cove. So there's, and I think, you know, so that's one issue is, you know, this, I, I anticipate the, depending on what the, the, the committee decides tonight, South Shore Cove members or other, and maybe other members of the community for other coves may be seeking kind of what Howie's talking about. Should we have plans for other coves or other areas? Um, so, but that's a set, uh, my sure. opinion is that's a separate yeah. consideration from what you have before you right now. And I'd like to respond that at the very beginning I asked if we had a motion that said a positive affirmation of this, that after that motion's turned down, could we then make another motion right now to change to to say something different? And so that's why I asked that question. You said we could, so we what don't do you, have to table this until later. What do you mean to say something different? I'm I'm going to interject. Yeah, please. Um, I agree with Patrick that we should solve this issue right now. Okay. There's no question that it's going to come up in the future that we have to review our mooring ordinance. And I wouldn't cram it all together right now, Howie. Okay. Nobody's gonna forget this meeting tonight. Uh, I, I guess my-, my Well, let me finish. Okay. Uh, you're making it more complicated. And I think, I think if we just simplify the matter, solve this issue that's been presented to us, we're gonna have a meeting every month <clears throat> And it's going to be a long process to uh, review all the uh, requests and uh, thoughts that people have for a new ordinance. And I don't think we can cram it all together tonight. I, I totally appreciate that, Rick. My, my main concern about that was that if we made a decision tonight, it would be grandfathered in. And that way, it couldn't be changed after, after the town. I don't think something. you have to worry about it. Fair enough. I won't. Yeah. Would it, could we put a moratorium in on new moorings being set? I like the raise in all the harbors. I know they're closed harbors. Could you say, could we vote to say there's a moratorium? Harbor, the harbor master has the authority to moor. If you want a moratorium, yeah. on that, but you'd like to put that to town meeting. Town meeting. I'm still going to ask the Zoom members if they want to interject. Patrick, do you want to review our motion or the motion? Sure. So, so that I can hold the vote. Yes. So if if no one else has any any more you know, comments, the motion is. <laughs> Based on the pre-filed evidence and comments of site visit and testimony and comments provided at public hearing, the Harbor Master's decision to grant four moorings to the Northeast Harbor Fleet in South Shore Cove satisfies section 7.4 of the Harbor Ordinance because the moorings do not detract from the order of the tidal waters or harbors of the town and do not jeopardize the safety and use of the tidal waters and harbors of the, of the general public. Everyone understand the motion? All those in favor of the motion as presented, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Oh, I'm sorry. What, what it was uh, five. Uh, I thought, um, let's, can we do that? Can we just confirm again? So all, all that are voting affirmative. Affirmative, raise your hand again. Aye. So we've got three here. Aye. Four. Four. Bill. Okay. Okay. And then the <clears throat> opposed. Opposed. Got four. No Donna. And Donna is what's Donna's position? To accept that. I'm not opposed. Not opposed. <laughs> That's five. Five. And four. And do we have an abstaining vote? No. No. So um, the motion here. Here. Motion carries. The motion carries. So Tom, Tom Burnley voted in the affirmative. Well, for uh, your written document. Okay. <laughs> Five, four.
Okay. Um, I see that John is requesting a roll call. Well, I could. I've got, we don't mean, we've got Tom, Rick, Howie, Donna, and Chris in the affirmative, correct? Right. Okay. Yeah. We've got the other four members that are voting against. Okay. Um, I just, I just to show everybody that this isn't the end of this. And uh, Howie, you've got a lot of good ideas. Uh, it's just we're not prepared for it tonight. I totally understand. That's why I voted. And uh, we've got uh, a long time to, to work on this. So is there anything else anybody would like to bring up? Mr. Chairman, I, would, ahead, I want my vote to be recorded as we're going to leave the harbor master's decision to go forward. If it was recorded in the negative or something, I'd like to have it changed. So Bill, are you voting to in the affirmative to support the the motion as I read it that the to, that the harbor master's decision satisfies the ordinance yeah. department? Okay. So yeah. that changed this is six three. No, I think you, no, you miscounted. Excuse me, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think you miscounted Chris. Okay. It's five four. Oh, it's Harry. So you, did you vote in the negative? Yes, I did. Okay, so Chris voted in the negative. Good thing I caught it. And so Bill voted in the positive, Chris in the negative. Okay. All right. That's fine. Okay. That should be the close of this meeting if they were part of the meeting. <laughs> yeah. So move. I have nothing to say. A motion to adjourn. <clears throat> so move. Seconded. I'll second it. All in favor, say aye. Raise your hand. Opposed. Aye. Thank you, everybody. I assume so, we'll talk more later. Thank you. Later. Thank you. I assume we'll talk mornings later. Um, Harbor Committee.